So for today's Noir Rember title, I delved into an era of filmmaking that I generally do not like. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is the American New Wave. It was 1970s male-centric cinema. It's not my favorite time period. I generally don't like films from this era. True to that, I did not particularly care for this film. This is John Cassavetti's The Killing of a Chinese Bookie. I watched the director's cut, which is about a half an hour shorter than the original theatrical release, slightly re-edited. Um, I don't know that if I, if I should have watched the other version. I read conflicting things, so I decided to go with the shorter one because I figured I wasn't going like, <laughs> to like it anyways. <laughs> I might as well invest less time. Um, that's what I did. Now, uh, to my oft- point. I am not making a statement on the filmmaking. The technical prowess of this film is, as always with Casavetti's, economic and purposeful. He knows what he wants to film. He films it well. And I generally like Casavetti's, to be honest. I really, really love um, shadows and faces and um, a woman under the influence. I haven't really delved into his sort of more bro cinema, and unfortunately, this was my first foray here. This was, um, I love Ben Gazzara too. He's, he's, you know, he's endlessly watchable, but I just, too many men, too many suits. And, and, and there were women in this film, more than one, and they all had names. But I also felt like we didn't get enough of them, which I read in the other version. There's more, um, of them like dancing, which I don't know if that's an improvement or not. Um, so the plot is that Ben Gazzara has just, he's, he owns a strip club. He has just gotten himself debt free and in celebration, stupidly gets himself back into debt. And then in order to get out of that debt, he gets roped into killing a Chinese bookie or what he thinks is a Chinese bookie. What, um, in, as in all noir, what is presented on the surface to the protagonist is not what the rest of us know and not what the protagonist later finds out he's been roped into. Um, more happens. It's beautifully shot. It's got great neon. It's got that gritty, you know, mid-70s L.A. look to it. Um, can't, can't deny that that's really well made. I think there's some commentary on... Um, what war does to men as the Gazara character is supposed to be a Korean War veteran, and that is a big plot point. Um, but I don't know that it 100% works. I don't know. There, I, I just don't think I, I'm destined to like these kind of films. I, I've tried so many times, and I'll probably keep watching them um, and keep having the same feeling where it's just like, it's not made for me. Um, I did like the ambiguous ending. You don't quite know what's going to happen with this guy. Um, you can see that inspiration in earlier noir, and you can see it inspiring later noirs. Uh, I definitely felt like aspects of this film were uh, found in the DNA of things like Drive. Drive is a film I really love. I don't know why uh, I can't get into 70s cinema, but I like Drive. Maybe it's the soundtrack. Soundtrack rules on Drive. Um, but that's that's where I'm at with this film. So this is this is a Cassavetes that's not for me. That said, oh, I also enjoyed Timothy Carey, and he had some really great looks in this in this film. Timothy Carey's also in Kubrick's The Killing and many other great crime films. Um, I guess I, 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 you know, I'm going to stick to my Gina Davis, not Gina Davis, Gina Rollins, Jenna Rollins. Well, I can't even speak. Holy crap. I'm just going to stick to my Jenna Rollins, Cassavetes films and, and call it good, I think. Um, but I bet many of you enjoy Cassavetes and I bet many of you will enjoy this film. Um, so go enjoy it. I just, it was not for me. This is The Killing of a Chinese Bookie from 1976, uh, and I'm finally checking it off my list. I wasn't that big of a fan.